Hello, I'm William Friedkin, director of The Exorcist. The Exorcist is a film about the mystery of faith. And I think the fact that it's endured for more than 25 years now is due in large part to what it leaves you with after you've seen the film. Welcome listeners to another episode of Mum, Movies and Me. This is a series of podcasts where me, myself, Bob Noble, and my mum, June Noble, look back on the popular film. How are you today, Mum? Fine, thank you. This is the second part of the Exodus podcast. If you'd like to go back and watch the first part, this is our, our thoughts after seeing it again. This is the first time you've seen it in how long, Mum? Well, since nine, well, nearly 20, well, 20 years, Bob. 20 years. Mm-hmm. Has your opinion changed since that watch? No, I, I don't think so, no. I mean, I still really enjoyed it. I still found it frightening. I still found it a very, very entertaining film. Mm. And I found, found it a very well-made film. You watched it in the dark, yeah. Um, did that help at all? Did that kind of add to the atmosphere or anything like that? Probably did, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a remastered copy, wasn't it? Uh, digital, it was a, yeah, I think the audio was redone as well. Right, yeah. Did you like the little intro bit? I think we're going to yeah, use that in the podcast. Yeah, I quite freaking... liked I mean, it. Yeah, it was a, quite an intelligent introduction. It wasn't sensationalised. It looked a bit old-fashioned with what he was did wearing. You, yeah, I think that was, cause that's, that was for the 1998 remaster. I think so. I think did so. you, um, when you saw that, did you get a little bit angsty? watching them and, and kind of hyping it up because this was just before we started watching it in this intro Of course, story. of course. I think it did help. I think his introduction was worthwhile. And kind of Maybe for people who haven't ever seen The Exorcist. Probably, yeah. Looking at it again, can you see why it was so controversial at the time? I still can see that and I don't mm. really understand why in 1998 it wasn't controversial anymore. Mm. I don't see what had changed in, in yeah. that time. You know, I it's... can see... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's... Because when I watched it, I kind of went in like a bit cocky and saying, "Oh, it's something a bit scary." But when I watched it with you, I wasn't frightened, but I was there was there was some it was pretty tense, and there was something about it, something eerie, uh-huh. had this ominous. It was because of you, I think you were uh-huh. you kind of talked uh-huh. a little bit through it, just chatting, to, like, "Oh, there's that act or whatever," but there was something there. There is, it's a powerful film, definitely, definitely. definitely. Um, how well is it aged to you? I th- I still think it looks good. I mean, it obviously looks older in the you know the clothes that they're wearing. The mm. actors have obviously aged or died since it was made. Mm. I think partly what I enjoyed the first time and the second time was how young and innocent she looked. I think Reagan. that was really really important. Yeah, I always forget what she looks like before because I'll, I've, every time I see her, you obviously see her with the scar mm-hmm. and the pale face and the green or whatever it is, the eyes especially. Yeah. But she is. She's a very good looking little girl. She's very very pretty young yeah, girl and not good makeup mm-hmm. on. She's you know she's fresh. She's like, and obviously the 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 role by Ellen Burstyn. Mm-hmm. I mean she was fantastic. Did you believe the relationship between Ray? Totally. And yeah. I think at the very beginning when they're talking and it was quite it wasn't like staged because the mm-hmm. the three of them you know the, there was interlapping when they were talking which That's would normally happen say. in a conversation. It mm-hmm. wouldn't be as it usually is in films mm-hmm. and that even at the time the first time I saw. So I found it credible, yeah. the relationship, and I found it quite natural. Yeah, the dialogue, especially between them. And the only thing I will say, they do have, it seems a little bit too perfect. Chris's character is very protective of Regan. Uh-huh. Maybe a little bit overprotective, maybe because of the whole relationship with the father. Well, the father, plus she is working and she's away quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I think she probably feels guilty that way. Yeah, of course. Moving on to another, I didn't realise he was in it that much. Um, Jason Miller's character, Damien Karras. Uh-huh. He's... Uh-huh. Massive, and he's got yeah. a huge role in the mm-hmm. film. But as you were saying last night, it's called The Exorcist. Yes, that's and I think obviously we the other exorcist in this film, um, played by <laughs> Max Van Sydow. I've actually don't have him here on the cast list for some reason. It's oh, even though he's in it, he's one of the first characters. We see. He's not actually in it that much though. No, but he's a very important character. Of obviously, course, Max is. Van Sydow knew it was coming. You know, he yeah. knew that he was going to be called upon, and the, mm. as we spoke before, now, I don't know how the uh, yeah. how they made him look so old when he wasn't he couldn't have been that old yeah. I have to look up and see because he, he looks old in everything you see him mm-hmm. that's the one thing that the thing I think of when they do that to an actor like Ian McDermott um, as the Emperor in Star Wars mm-hmm. what a weird thing they did was in Empire Strikes Back oh sorry in Return of the Jedi he plays the Emperor but he was young back then and mm-hmm. they put him on his face makeup yeah. and they made him look older and then the prequels he reprises the role yeah. but he looks older and he's kind of aged he, he, he didn't need as much prosthetics no. it's strange why, didn't, why do you think they got him over I think he, he was. He was a very. I mean, I think I don't know if I'd seen him much before, but he was. He did the. It's a famous film to do with this seven. Oh, I can't remember what it was mm. called. Something to do with talking with God. I can't remember right, what okay. that was called. He did so some. He he's obviously foreign. He's not. He's not American actor. Uh-huh. He's 
don't know if he's Swedish or what he is. Yeah, he has some kind of Scandinavian. He had he had a reputation mm-hmm. as a, a good actor. He's also very tall. He's, he seems probably a stage actor. That's probably what it is. I you think, think I, so? I feel as, I don't know for sure, but I just feel as if he has a gravitas. I think he did Ingmar, Ingmar Bergman films, but right, I okay. could be wrong. We want to another cast member, Lee J. Cobb, yeah. as Lieutenant William Kinderman. Uh-huh. You're quite good. Excellent. Again, a very credible actor, but mm. he, I felt the way he played it was a wee bit like Columbo, kind of pretending, right. no, you know, he would skirt round about things, but really mm. he was going in he, for the kill, but yeah. he, was, he did it in such a way, and the relationship between him and... Chris and Father Caris was uh-huh. very good. And I never realised when he was he's a film buff. Uh-huh. Tries to ease his way in mm-hmm. by kind of commonality. Mm-hmm. Um, he says to Damien Caris, "Do you like films and stuff?" And he does that the same thing with Chris. Like he, he she know, he obviously knows that she's mm-hmm. an actor, famous for her yeah. famous actor. Do you think that autograph was genuine? I don't. It's just something about it. I don't know. It was, it was very strangely done. I don't know why he was getting her to. I think it must have been. Why else would he want her yeah. signature? Yeah, of course. Just I just way. thought it was just I just thought it was one of those kind of detective bits where they take the autograph and uh-huh. realise all. But it was just the way he did it. I just thought it was. A, it was just to soften the character, and make mm-hmm. him look. I mean, he, he, I don't think it was a harsh character, but it was no. a smart character. Yeah, of course, Jack McGrown as uh, Burt Dennings. Burke. <laughs> very short role. But very, but you know, memorable. You remember him. Yeah. Totally memorable. Uh, what was the thing he said? What was the? Do you know what she did? Your cunting daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realise that. Because I was watching it back, I thought that was the demon's voice. Oh, but no, is, no, is, that's Burke. It's Burke that's talking. Vo- obviously, okay. he doesn't have much, but he's obviously... I, th- I think, obviously, the way they've put him in, because he's got the English accent, that's why you can determine. You know, yes, if, they, if they had him as an American actor, you would not know that was him speaking through her, uh-huh. or supposedly speaking. Mm-hmm. But um, he did have a way with words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kitty Wynn as Sharon Spencer quite a small role a bit an important role I think yeah. yeah she was she kind of edged her way out towards the end uh-huh. I think obviously she shows her back up in the end um, to kind of see them goodbye uh-huh. they go to Europe what do you think about the music oh obviously the music at the time tubular bells I mean everyone knew that music mm-hmm. I don't remember what other music was through that's what was interesting really somebody remember. was telling me recently that um, the person who was doing the score got kicked off quite late on in the film and William Freakin was pretty obviously a mad uh-huh. with it he was like I think he was upset with the score in the first place but now he was kind of in a, in a ditch where he was like I have no score for my film but that actually really works it does it's one of those it only shows up a couple of times mm-hmm. at the start and at the end there's a little bit but it's not the same type of music mm-hmm. kind of reminds me of like No Country for Old Men uh-huh. Uh-huh. It turning a negative into positive the no music part just helped I think the music wasn't overpowering I think mm-hmm. it, it was quite subtle quite funky Mm-hmm. Like it, even I think heavily inspired uh, like Halloween you can uh-huh. sometimes I get mm-hmm. confused what think, about lighting what do you how did you think the well I, th- I, th- I think as you and I were watching it last night it wasn't so much the lighting I mean obviously the it's quite a lot of browns and kind of golds mm-hmm. and um, I th- you know obviously the lighting on their faces you know you could see the yeah. the pallor uh-huh. coming through whether it be Reagan whether it be Chris they, 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 they like to highlight how pale their faces yeah. they and like even them Merrin, his yeah. colour obviously near he the end. Thing. The only thing is though, the one thing I'll say about his character, like the the hair. There's some I feel as if there's something weird with his hair. He I don't probably know dyed it because he probably wasn't that colour. Yeah, it didn't probably look right. brown hair. Moving on from that, actually, the special effects. What do you think of those? Well, I still think they stand up. I mean, there are times I remember seeing it at the beginning, and I thought her body doesn't look like her body. You talked, you talked, you highlighted that when we watched uh-huh. the bit with the. When it saved me. Save me, or help, help me, me, help me, and it's her uh, the engraving the scars. Yeah, that was a bit plastic mm-hmm. looking, and also when she was elevating off the bed, she looked fatter. Right. Okay. I didn't really. Yeah. Well, maybe that was there was a probably a. Probably they had to, I don't know, holster her up and she uh-huh. had a, like a um, probably, yeah, yeah. Like a holster she def- and I remember when I first saw it, realizing that didn't look right. And obviously, uh-huh. there was other times where you saw her from behind and it wasn't that actress, but mm-hmm. there's some things that she shouldn't have been doing anyway at her age, yeah. It was that's the one thing you highlighted that film, The Exodus could only be made during that time, it, it would not made. be allowed now, yeah. not with a girl that age, uh, and also the, the refrigerated room. Uh, it's not a hugely was, healthy safety, mm-hmm. health and safety problem, mm-hmm. but it adds to the film. Well, it certainly worked. You can actually, you could you tell can, they were in a freezing cold room. It, yeah. it wasn't pretend. No, it was. There is. You even talked about the smell. I didn't get uh-huh, a lot of that. Uh-huh. I know obviously in the book. They I did because of the book. I think the vomit. I didn't. I think though the vomit is very green. It is. It never changes colour. Most people's vomit changes colour. Over time. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. I just think... I mean, bile, that, that's supposed to be bile. But yeah, bile can like go orange. from pale yellow right through to 
dark grey. Yeah. So it wouldn't always be pea green. But maybe it was something to do with the lighting. Maybe they did it once and they, they couldn't get the colour right and they couldn't really see it or highlight it. They obviously the liked the pea green effect. I, I think, though, I do... It's, it's iconic now, I suppose, mm. that scene, that pea green vomit. But it could, of course. I, just, I would think maybe orange. I don't know. Just make it more realistic. And I think it would have... Well, having known how bile changes mm. colours when people are sick, I know that that's not <laughs> always... The colour of it, but... What was the scariest part of the film for you? Again, I didn't like the sniggering. It, was, it, was, it wasn't the end of it, but this, the side of the bed when she was sniggering. Yeah. That I found quite frightening. Because she was underplayed. She's the way she sits. She sits like a normal little girl. Yes, She looks yes. playful. And she, yeah, she does. And she's she's sort of got a certain look in her face. I don't know what the look is, but... Mm. Like and then some bite her finger or uh-huh. like suck her thumb or something. Mm-hmm. As if, she's playing into the innocence of yes. Reagan. One of the things I noticed... Um, in terms of camera angles and, and motifs was the the door was always highlighted there was always a noise or a, or a sound or something from the, um, the hard bedroom, from bedroom door bedroom coming up mm-hmm. and what they would do is they would always film the characters running up the room uh-huh. or looking at the door in anticipation of what it was because yeah. it's quite a few times that I think happened. that was to let the audience have the anticipation yeah. you were scared to go in they yeah. were scared to go in so mm. you're scared to go in with them uh-huh. when the camera's taking you in and when you're shutting windows you're scared what she's going to see when she turns around yeah because they did it a few times, it was four or five times. There yeah. was and then they things. would show the door from a different angle, and you know, the door would shut, and she, you know, no one could get in or out. Mm. Well, at the time when you first watched the film, did you know that uh, Max von Sydow's Marion, Max, Max von Sydow's character Marion, was going to die when he went in alone, or? Oh, I thought they were probably both going to die. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that I was? I think that was that was inevitable. Right. Okay. I mean, they said that when he'd done the exorcism before, the exorcism before it had almost killed him. Course. So this time he had a heart condition, it was going to kill him. Yeah. You said that Reagan is going to give you nightmares. Uh huh. So that was last night. Did you have No, I, I, don't, I don't remember dreaming about that. But again, when I shut my eyes, I do see her face. When I was younger, I would shut my eyes and I would see her, her face all the time. Mm. Not when she was pretty and young, and, but when she was possessed. And It's nice to see her. I remember the end of the film because it's not for, I didn't forget what she looked like, but it was they reintroduce her uh-huh. just normally and she doesn't, she does look off. There's something about her. I still feel creepy. Like mm-hmm. she does look innocent at the start, and then you remember what she turns into. She's got very dark eyes. She me? has, but they obviously again they make her look really pale at the end because yeah. she's obviously been, you know, she was obviously unwell when she was mm-hmm. possessed. Because there's times in the book where they fear she might die because mm-hmm. they, they over sedate her. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't really highlight that in the film. No, actually. no, you don't get all the nuances about you know her bodily functions. Yeah, so let's talk about Chris's drive as a mother, putting her through everything. Uh-huh. Oh, the test, you mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you think that was important to see all that? I think so. I think at the time, I mean, obviously I didn't know much about medical stuff at that time and I thought, my goodness, that must be really sore getting... I mean, it's obviously mm. that there was a noise more of these They do. There's a, a huge sort of a sound played into this. Uh-huh. There's a lot of... In the start of the film, when they're in Iraq, the people... It, it, like, winging away, and I don't, mm-hmm. know, I don't know what it means, but like, there's, a, some, there's no. something about... Hitting and, uh-huh. and unearthing, I suppose. Of I course. That's what it is about unearthing it. But they, even later on, when he's still in Iraq, when he's in the bazaar, there's there people are. That's right. There's three of them the doing it. In, or uh-huh. something, they're doing mm-hmm. it, and it's there's something very, about very that. loud. Um, yeah, I, I just really like the fact that the build, as you said, I, I we first watched the first half it was about an hour in. Mm-hmm. And we haven't really seen much in terms of... No, but of that, that's what I've always said. That's why I found it a believable film, because mm-hmm. it doesn't do what most horror, or if you want to class it as a horror film, mm. does, and straight in, you know, after two minutes, somebody's dead or something's happened. Yeah. No it does. certainly took a long time yeah. to get to It was the, the kind of early stages, even when... It's when Chris goes up the stairs, he goes in and checks on Reagan. I think it's just after. She's peed her pants. Uh-huh. She's peed in front of the, the room of her actor friends, and the window's open. Uh-huh. The camera kind of pans down, and we see Reagan's face, and she's wide awake. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And there's something you happening. You know something's inside. happening. Yeah. yeah, of course. It's just that look. She just mm-hmm. looks. She doesn't turn around and say hello to her mother. She's no. just mm-hmm. comatose. She's, mm-hmm. There's something wrong with her. Mm-hmm. So that's you watched it. Uh huh. Back when you first saw it, you saw it again in 1998, and that's the first time you've seen it in 20 odd years. Yeah, 20 years. 20 years. I still find it's one of my favourite films of mm-hmm. all time. Do you think you could watch it again, again now? Like. I can still watch it and enjoy it, yeah. Could I don't watch want it alone? no, no, I'm not watching it. <laughs> I still remembered as you as we were watching it. I still remembered some of the dialogue. 
as yeah, you noticed. Yeah, you brought that up. You did. You could I did. Lines. I knew exactly what they were going to say at times. So mm. I don't know how many times I saw it at the beginning. I must have seen it more than once or twice. I don't mm. remember. I'm glad we watched it. Yep, I so think am I. that mm-hmm. it was something that I wasn't really sure on. If I watched it again, and I wouldn't appreciate it, but I actually do appreciate it. I'm glad you watched it again with uh-huh. me. Uh-huh. I wasn't actually sure if you were going to because <laughs> you'd be quite scared, but you could watch it again. I could, yeah. I'm not going mm. to, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years and I might watch it again. But it hadn't lost anything for me, which is... It's, a, pr- know, it's a tribute to how good. powerful that film yeah, is. Like, I think modern audiences maybe don't, see the same way but there is something oh they definitely there. don't most a lot of people I've spoken I want to, see to the they, don't, they, don't un- they don't understand what all the fuss was about mm-hmm. and I don't understand why they don't understand <laughs> <laughs> right we'll wrap it up there guys okay. thank you very much for listening thanks again for joining mum thank um, you thanks for listening folks I'll see you all later bye bye Excellent day for an exorcism.